Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen, to Global Impromptu Speaking Session number 175. I really appreciate it. It's a milestone meeting. We are 25 meetings away from our second century, 200th meeting. meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, without your support, it was not possible what we have achieved as of now. Trust me, every single session we are learning something or the other from every single person who is participating. As mentioned by Toastmaster Savita, ma'am, that there is nothing wrong, there is nothing right. It's just a matter of you speaking out and definitely boosting your energy or empowering your thoughts. That's it. In this session, you will be speaking for one minute, two, two minutes and 30 seconds. And for the remaining session, you'll be just observing silence and paying attention to other speakers and learning from their life experiences. That means you care about the society, you care about the people who you are listening to. That's what we practice. We practice many things, not only public speaking, but patience, humbleness, support, elating, all these things. Ladies and gentlemen, today our topics master is very well known, notorious, incisive to us master Omar Farooq. Before I call him up on stage, we will call our, our humble lady, our very supportive uh, member of this forum, DTM Jesse, as the timer to explain the timing mechanism. Please put your hands together to welcome our opening on stage. Good evening. Uh, good, good evening, and I welcome all of you on board uh, the 175th. That's again a milestone meeting, and uh, it's good. That, uh, the, the word of the day is incisive. Incisive means cutting or sharp. The doctors would know the word very well. That is, you know, you need to be sharp, very clear, penetrating, uh, you know, incisive comment or incisive surgery. Uh, it, they call incision also, isn't it, Dr. Farida? Yes. So try and uh, uh, rope in the word mm -hmm. in your speeches. The, at one minute, I will be showing the green light. At one minute, 30 seconds, I will be showing the amber light. And at two minutes, I'll show the red light by which time try to uh, wrap up your speech so that all of us can get a good two minute speeches to speak. Uh, thank you and over to you, Amjad Ali. Thank you so much, DTM. Just really appreciate for your support as usual. Ladies and gentlemen, now I will not take much of your time, but to call upon the man with his own natural helmet, a man who is known for his uh, strict, uh, man, <laughs> he's laughing. Uh, typical or uh, uh, difficult topics, please put your hands together to welcome our own amazing Toastmaster Omar Farooq. Over to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Didi Amjad. Man with his own helmet. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> okay, so la ladies and gentlemen, today's session will be about spiritual, your soul. And all topics will be related to it in one way or the other. So, and the uh, word of the day is incisive, means analytical, sharp, and to be very thoughtful. So, it is in the my name also, incisive TM Umar Faru. So, all the topics will be incisive. <laughs> so, if you don't forget the word of the day. So, let's start with Farida Ma'am. Uh, or maybe us. Okay, Farida Ma'am, let's see. So, Faida ma'am, your topic is have been told, dismiss what insults your soul. Re-examine what have you have been told and dismiss what insults your soul. I'll put it in the chat. A very good evening to my global impromptu family members. The topic that has been given to me is re-examine all you have been told and dismiss what insults your soul. This is an extremely incisive topic in terms of clarifying what your thinking should be and how you should groom yourself as you grow older and as you try to change your personality into something or become someone that you want to be. Personally, I feel that we should re-examine whatever we have been told, but whatever we have been told 
comes from somewhere. It comes from culture. It comes from religion. It comes from our background. So if we have been told a certain lifestyle or a certain mindset is correct, there is a background to that mindset. There is a background to that certain way of living. And I feel that if we re-examine it, we should not be very harsh in re-examining it. There are many people, especially in Pakistan and amongst the youngsters, they will say, this event is not very important. This certain cultural tradition, we don't really need to follow it. This certain thing, I don't know why people do it. They're just following things blindly just because our forefathers have been doing it or our uncles and aunts have been doing it. We should follow a certain tradition or eat in a certain way or dress in a certain way. So especially in the newer generation as they're exposed to different cultures, different religions and people from all around the world, they're extremely astute about these things and they try to remove these things from their lives and live lives the way they want to live. Personally, I'm an old timer and my thinking may be a little old fashioned and may come as a surprise, but I tend to cling to my cultural values. I tend to attach myself to the things that have been passed down to me by my parents, by my grandparents. And I some there are so many things that I just follow blindly without re-examining it, without being very harsh on them that why do we have to eat this in this way? Why do we, when we step out of the house, the right foot goes first? Why do we pray this way? Why is this important? Why is that important? There are many a times when I feel that we should make peace. We should make peace with ourselves and the generation which has gone behind us, which has passed behind us, by just accepting things as they are, instead of trying to fight everything and question everything. And a lot of the trouble that the teenagers get into nowadays, I feel it's because this why doesn't let go of them, doesn't let them allow it, does, the, does not allow them peace of mind. And all the time they're in this struggle. They're fighting off their elders and they're fighting within themselves. So that is my take for tonight. I totally, disagree with this topic. I feel we should re-examine whatever has been told to us, but no, we should not be very harsh. There are many things, there's no harm in following things that we have been told, in accepting things that has been passed on to us over the generation. And of course, our soul, we should accept things, even if it is insulting in a certain way to a certain extent, it's okay to follow things. Just because others have followed, it's perfectly okay, at least for me. So this is my take for tonight. A very good evening to everybody. Love you all. Yes. Whatever. <laughs> you are once again played devil's advocate. <coughs> and actually, I, I agree to disagree with you, but it's okay. <laughs> good. good. So wonderful. So next, we have Savita, ma'am. Yes, Toastmaster. Savita ma'am, this is a very famous, very, very famous quote and uh, uh, one of my favorites. I do, I, so let's see. We are not human beings having spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having human experience. We are not human beings having spiritual... Oh, one minute. We are not human beings having spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having human experience. I'll put it in the chat. Thank you so much, Table Topic Master, Toastmaster Umar, and my greetings to everyone present here. Human beings having a spiritual experience. I think we should first become human beings. Spiritual experience would come afterwards. And people who have become human, I think, I think they definitely they achieve that spirituality. To achieve that spirituality, you don't have to do something big. You don't have to do something enormous. You just have to be simple human being, kind, sympathetic, helpful, trying to understand other person's perspective. We are not human being having a spiritual experience. Spiritual experience comes when? After a long time, spiritual experience is not a small thing. It is 
it is it it is achieved after a long practice i feel not following particular religion or any particular things in the life but understanding that this world is a temporary phase coming to the understanding that we are just here for some moments nobody knows that span whether it is one year two years 10 years 70 years 80 years 90 years nobody knows when our last breath is going to come if that basic step we understand that we are our life is uncertain unpredictable and whatever we have it is because of the circumstances what we are into it only those circumstances decide are we of the some part of the basic chain and circumstances decide what we have and then otherwise nothing is in our control to experience we are spiritual beings having a human experience it's an ultimate i think it's a big science to understand and reach that level we as normal human beings it's a it's a difficult difficult thing but not impossible with practice we can achieve definitely you have to have continuous in touch with that spirituality understand the basic things then you can go it thank you and back to you toastmaster umar interesting day this session is will going to be a very interesting one because i am already getting different kind of replies i i mean myself being a very spiritual kind of person so let's see the different it takes from other people so jessi ma'am i can take you at the end no issues okay you are on mute actually okay so i i towards the end i will you know issues okay So we have Anetta with us. Anetta. Yes, sir. Anetta, uh, you will you will do it without the video, or you working on that now, sir? Go ahead. Uh, okay. So your topic is reflection is the lamp of the heart. If it departs, the heart will have no light. I repeat, reflection is the lamp of the heart. if it departs the heart will have no light i'll put it in the chat also okay good day good day everyone let me see that chat i think i caught that it was a great topic reflect the heart no light greetings fellow toastmasters and guests reflection when you think about reflection what's the first thing that comes to your mind for me it is light reflecting on something or someone i see the light in the situation i see the light in the individual when you see me do you see light if you know me i believe you see light if you don't know me then listen to these words very carefully you are meant to live life on purpose in your purpose reflect on that for just a moment and then let's get to the heart of the matter my heart is just that it's filled with light light that i receive from those that i am around and those that i have been around yes my culture is such i depend on being a light bearer bearing light everywhere i set my feet like you you are a light bringer everywhere you set your feet you bring hope you bring light even if it's without words reflect on that for the remainder of the day and think about wherever i go i bring light wherever i have been i've left light so when light leaves the heart then you become invisible but 
You've left light somewhere along the way. Go back and pick it up and bring light into that person's day, into that person's life. Reflect on that and you'll always have light in your heart. Back to you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Wonderful, Rita. Very inspirational. We are the ones who bring light in others. Words. Great, great, wonderful take. And that light reflects on others. Great thoughts. We have with us Supriya. Supriya, are you there? Supriya, are you there? Okay, uh, she's... Uh, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, okay, so you want to try a topic? You'll open the video? Or yes. No, I will try. I'm, I'm not good, but let me give it a try. Uh, yes, we are not all good also. We are working on it also. We are all working for this year. So your topic is... Uh, I'll give you a lighter one. The most wasted of all days is without is the one without laughter the most wasted of all days is one without laughter supriya I put uh, my... hello greetings to my fellow toastmasters and my dear friends so today's topic is about how we are enjoying our life to live our life so if you are not spending any moment in your day for at least smiling or you're laughing, then I would say the day is waste. We need to live our life. We have a lot of, uh, everybody has problems. Uh, everybody has everything, like problems, ups, downs, and everything. But it is not fruitful if you, uh, if you don't laugh. Laughter is you're spreading, you're spreading your smiles, you're spreading your happiness when you are with others. So I would say like, uh, yes, it's an integral part of our life. You need to enjoy, you need to take the positivity in all the things what you are doing. So then you will enjoy it. Then you will take it um, in a good way. And uh, yes, that's all. Again, I would say that, yes, if, if a day is wasted out without smiles or laughter, a day is gone. Thank you. Over to you. Wonderful, Supriya. Yes, we should enjoy them. Every second we waste not being sad is without time we are wasting being happy. So let's start. We have with us Carl. Carl, I have one of my favorite topics from all at entire list that I've created. So Very I think, nice. Yes. So your topic is <clears throat> if you don't behave as you believe, you will end up believing as you behave. I'll repeat, if you don't behave as you believe, you will end up believing as you behave. I'll put it in the chat also to, for, to understand it. If you don't behave as you believe, you will end up believing as you behave. That's an interesting statement and it implies that there is some kind of feedback loop between our internal state, our being, our values and our beliefs and how we behave, that somehow they reinforce each other. And that could be true, that probably is true, but that would then also mean that we not really are anyone. We are just what we, what we behave like, that we become, and what we become will later behave, behave like. I do, however, believe it is not that simple. That might be part of the puzzle, but I also believe that we are in this world brought to this life as a special someone. We come with a soul memory. We come with a mission. We come with this life to learn. And that is, that is to say that we need to do something in this life. If we choose to want to do that, we have free will. We don't necessarily have to do it, but we are here for a certain purpose. We bring with us karma. We bring with us traumas from earlier lives. We have some memories and we need to do something. I believe that we're here on earth, not necessarily to laugh and have fun, because I think when we are laughing and having fun as human beings, 
that's great. But when we are crying as human beings, the soul might still be having a good time because from a soul's perspective, it's a great learning, even when we as human beings feel that we're going through hard times. And I believe that the only time when the soul is really crying is when you are being egoistic and when you are causing harm to others. So I believe that we come here as a certain individual and I think that we should try to be true to ourselves. So we should try to behave as we believe. That would be the more important aspect of that. Instead of trying to behave in another way and trying to adopt somebody else's perspective, let's try to be as real as possible as we can to ourselves, as our purpose, our mission in this life. And let's try to make our souls happy by being thankful, not only for the happy moments in life, but also the sad moments and experience and appreciate life, the whole life. Thank you so much. Wonderful, Carl. Very incisive take on the topic and very good, good thoughts. Wonderful. So we have with us Dineshwar. I don't know how I'm pronouncing. He was there. Yes, he's there, Dineshwar. Dineshwar, yes, you are a first. Yes, you are a first timer, huh? Yeah. Okay. So your topic is. Self talk reflects your innermost feelings. Self talk reflects your innermost feelings. I'll put it in the chat, Dinesh. Yeah, please. Uh, good evening, dear Toastmasters uh, and guest. A uh, self talk uh, reflects. You're in, in the most feeling. Uh, definitely, that's a true, a true sentence. Uh, whatever the uh, author uh, writes, it's all about uh, the self-talk uh, that uh, they feel, uh, that they, they feel really from their bottom of heart. And who, whoever wants to succeed in their life, they need to talk, first of all, talk to ourselves. And then we realize, we compare, we analyze the things uh, with the data that we have, that we Google, that, that we listen from other Toastmasters also. And we compare, analyze, and then we, we will come to a conclusion. And then again, we rethink about uh, ours uh, with own self, uh, that whether is it authentic, is it right or wrong, that totally depend on our self-talk. How I'm going to talk with myself that, yes, Naneshwar, you are good. You are doing good. You are... So one day will come and you will become a DTM. That is what, that is your self-talk. And self-talks is important to live our life with zeal, with enthusiasm. And it shows your innermost feeling uh, while you're talking, while you're interacting, while you uh, while you are uh, walking every time. So I think a self-talk is very important and uh, it should be positive always because uh, many people uh, somewhere, uh, they, they, were, they were at the top position. Let's say example of Sushan Singh. And after some time, if they feel negative, if they talk negatively with themselves, so their energy will get reduced. So it should not happen with anyone. So that's it from my side. Thanks. Over to you, uh, Omar. Toastmaster Omar. Wonderful take, Dinshan. Great. Great thoughts. So we have, who is next? Uh, Sherman, sir. Sherman, sir, are you there? Unmute yourself. Okay. Yes. Sherman, sir, your topic, you are never alone. You are eternally connected with everyone. You are never alone. You are eternally connected to everyone. What are your thoughts on this? I so the topic master and global interference. And I felt recently, I, I was a COVID positive person. I was in isolated place. Uh, some people had like confined to a room or place will think about nothing to do. But I have a lot of things to do. I have a lot of Toastmasters to speak. 
and a lot of things to read and a lot of things to practice. I did yoga, I did anything, but anyway, I'm, I, I, I thought I'm not, I'm not alone. So more, even the, the Toastmaster is a very, uh, what do you call this, very uh, well connected and very network is very high. Number of members are there. So you are not alone. So always think, uh, actually, in a confined place also, I, I, I didn't feel, I didn't felt anything. I thought I'm connected to a number of people and relatives, the friends, and that's very important. That's not all of a sudden happen. Uh, during the period of time, you had friends and how you treated uh, your, 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 your relatives or subordinates, everything matters. So if you feel uh, you are alone, uh, you are not alone. Sometimes your bosses will tell, uh, you are not alone. We are there to help you. We are here to support you. So those things, those words are very important. Like in this situation, people think they are alone. So you better to speak people who infected COVID or your any, anybody. Some things, some, some people think they, they will upset the mentally. So better to have a connection and relationship and having all these uh, things is good for networking. So this is a network. Now we are, yeah, I'm talking to a global improved friends. So how many countries separating the, all these members, all these friends or, or the family? So I'm getting a lot of information talking to each and every, in front of each and every uh, countries, nations, audience. So it's a good thing, the virtual, and you are not alone. And over to you, Mr. Tabletop Master. Good thought, Sharman, sir. Wonderful. We are virtually connected, virtually connected at all, at all levels. <laughs> you, are a program, you want to attempt the topic or you just want to listen? What? I will just listen for it. Sure. Yeah. Okay, no issues. So let's have another one. Who is next? Gopal was there. Gopal Mantri is left. Okay, Dinisha ma'am is there? Uh, yes, Toastmaster Uma. Okay, Dinisha ma'am, your topic is. Okay. Love spiritually, not strategically. Love spiritually, not strategically. Anisha, man. I'll put it in the chat. Thank you, uh, Toastmaster, for the topic. Good evening to you all, globally impromptu family members. My topic today is love spiritually, not strategically. A love is a form of kindness which comes from our heart. So can we think and analyze it? It might be a very incisive decision if you do it. It should just flow from your heart. You sh we should not strategically use them. As uh, I believe, according to my religion, love and the kindness comes from the Brahmans and the Lord Buddha, and we have to give it to all others. Actually, the parents are uh, considered to be as a model for giving loving kindness because for all the children we do our best uh, for their prosperity to get their be benefit for their lives spending all our uh, time uh, not only the time all our effort with 
uh, expensive of all our lives. So it's a spiritual thing, actually. Uh, we do not, uh, we do not uh, think gets return on what we are doing, and we should not think it. Uh, how to do and what to do, like making some strategical in as a management says, because if you do it like that. To get maybe to con get control of themselves or somebody's uh, take it under to you, but it won't get the ultimate benefit. If you do it in your heart, you will get not only you, but the other people get the benefit of that spiritual loving, you also get the total benefit. Giving your loving kindness over to you, uh, Toastmaster Uma. Wonderful thoughts, Deja. We should. Yeah. The only spirituality is should be there. It's an important ingredient of love. So Sunita Ma'am is there. Sunita Ma'am, I have a very special topic for you. <laughs> no, this is a very. This is actually a very special topic. <laughs> Okay, your topic, and you have to give the underlying meaning. What does that mean? So your topic is: I have lived with several Zen masters, Zen, Zen masters, all of them cats. I have lived with several Zen masters, all of them cats. What does that actually mean? You have to tell me. Thank you, those. Master Uma, good evening to all the Global Impromptu family members. Uh, I am incapable of making an incisive uh, explanation for this, but uh, I think cats are very Zen animals. They live in their own world. They are blissful. Nothing ever bothers them. Cats learn to make you their master. I mean, they are your masters, unlike dogs who are your slaves. A human being is a cat, is a slave to a cat. And that is a reality. So how does a cat manage to do this? Cats are oblivious to whatever happens. Their comfort, their peace of mind and security is utmost in there. So they are not dependent on people. They are very house dependent. They are dependent on the place. So they are always in a Zen frame of mind. They ensure that nothing outside gets to them. They are not anybody's slave. They decide what to do and you have to yield to their ego. You have to beg for them to come to you. Unlike, uh, compared to dogs, they are very, very different. You are at their mercy. Uh, for instance, so many of you know, I have left Patch behind and come to India for so many months. So when I go back, I am yearning for Patch to come to me. I'm sure she will just walk away from me like, you were not there for six months. I am not even going to the. So they are Zen. They know they can get their whatever they want and they live in that sort of attitude. I am not dependent on anybody. So uh, cats are Zen people. And <laughs> I think that is what the topic means. Over to you, Toastmaster. I'm sorry. <laughs> you took the topic literally. I did. <laughs> good, good, good. Good attempt. Good attempt. Good attempt. Very, very good. Cats are very naughty Zen masters. <laughs> okay. So next we have uh, Naveen sir. Naveen sir is there? Yes. He's there. Yeah. Hello. Good evening. Yes. Naveen sir, your topic is your sacred space is where you find yourself over and over again. Your sacred space is where you find yourself over and over again. Naveen, sir. I'll put it in the chat. Fellow Toastmasters, whenever we are faced with any obstacle or any trouble in our life, 
what is the first thing we do? The first thing we do is that we go to the source of where we came from. Let me tell you one interesting story, which, uh, which just occurred to me while, I was, uh, while this topic was given to me. There was one story which I learned, which I heard in my childhood, in which one man asks other men to find out what is this third man's original language. He, he's a bilingual, he, he, he can speak a lot of languages. He, he must be knowing about seven or eight languages, but what is his original language? Try to find that out. So he spoke to that third person and he could speak all the languages fluently. Even he was not aware that what is his, his mother tongue and what is his original language. So he, he devised a plan. That is at the night time when, when the person was asleep, he got three, four person dressed as ghosts and he, and, and he scared him and the, the hell out of him. And once he scared him, he started speaking in his mother tongue. And he found out what is what is his mother tongue and what is his mother language, and he, and he and he won the bet. So friends, the sacred space is the place where you will go when you are faced with obstacles in your life, and that is the source of all your power in your life. So at any time, whenever you you feel disturbed, whenever you feel uh, that, that that is, I mean, uh, things are just not 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 going well, always stick back to your roots, and that's what I always do. Whenever I'm, I'm faced with some challenges, which, which I do not know how to solve, I always used to consult my parents and they used to find out some way or some places or, or some way to, 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 resolve, to resolve the matter. Because for, for me, that was the most sacred relation. And that was the place where, which was a source of power for me for really living my life. So find out your sacred place and be attached to your roots. Over to you. Toastmaster Omar. Good attempt, I mean, sir. Well done. So, yes. So now we have with us who is next? Vibha is not there, I think. Vibha has left. So, Samridhi is there. Samridhi? Yeah, I'm here. Samridhi, you want a hard topic or easy one? Easy, please. Oh, you are uh, you are not lucky this time. I have all the hard stuff. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. So your topic is the way is not thus in the sky. The way is in the heart. The way is not in the sky. The way is in the heart. What does that mean, Samriti? I'll put it in a chat. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. The heart wants what it wants. That's what I understand from this topic, to be honest. Whenever we're confused about which way we want to go, deep down in our heart, we always know that we have to pick either one of the choices we are given. The heart always knows which decision is the right decision. It's just the mind that confuses us. And I feel like, I'm sorry, the fee, I, feel, I feel like, uh, I'm sorry, can you give me another topic? I'm really nervous right now. Speak on this same topic. What does it mean to follow your heart? Tell us about that. Okay, sure. <laughs> okay. I'm going to share one of my personal experiences. When I was in fifth grade, I used to attend these dance classes. It was Katha classes. And whenever I went there, I always got like made fun of because I was really thin. And when I danced, everyone used to call me, uh, everyone used to tell me that I look like a robot which has malfunction. And even my dance teacher did. Like, <laughs> And it was really embarrassing, but in the school, I used to, uh, for some reason, I told everyone that I do Katha classes. And my dance teacher in the school was very impressed. And she was like, you need to show me. And I was very embarrassed because I was thinking like, why did I tell her? Because 
I was thinking that everyone will call me a robot, a malfunction robot again. But I went to the washroom and I was like, what do I do? What do I do? But then I just thought that, you know what? We'll see what happens. I'll deal with the aftermath. It's okay. And I just went there and I did it. And some kids did laugh at me, but it was fine because after that, I got way more confident at dancing, even in the classes. And my dance teacher stopped calling me a malfunction robot then. And I guess the, all the problem was that I was very, like, I was really scared and I was not confident at all in myself. And when I actually decided from like my heart that I really wanted to do this and I should do this, that's when it came upon me that I like, that's when it came upon, that's when the way opened itself. Like when one door closes, the other one opens up. Thank you and over to you. Good, very good. You followed your heart and now you are not the malfunction robot at all. <laughs> so, gone are those days, whatever. Great, great thoughts. So we have with us Zainab. Zainab, are you there? Don't be scared. I have a very easy topic. Zainab, maybe. Okay. So let's move on to Zainab is there, no? Zainab. Yes. Hello, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was on a call. Okay, no issues. Then your, your topic, a single day is enough to make us a little larger or another time a little smaller. A single day is enough to make us a little larger or another time a little smaller. I'll put it in the chat. I would like to say, uh, first of all, a very good evening to everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, the topic given to me is a single day is enough to make us a little larger or another time a little smaller. Uh, I think this topic really hits home, especially today, because I was feeling a little under, under the weather anyways. Uh, I, I do completely agree with this topic because I feel you, it's something that has always been told to us that, that good days and bad days come hand in hand. You don't get the rainbows without the storm. So you always, I think, at the back of your head, you're mentally prepared for the good days and the bad days. And you want to think that you can handle them. But the truth is that when rain comes down pouring on you, you don't really know how to handle it. And that's why you run for shade of any sort. And um, especially today, I feel, because um, one of my best friends is getting married today, right at this moment, and I can't be there. And that feels really bad because we've been friends for more than 10 years at this point and I was supposed to be her major partner. But I'm right here, I'm here sitting in a presentation on a mention for me. So I'm not having the time of my life today and I'm feeling really small. Uh, although on the other hand, you would think that being in the, being in the medical profession, I would feel big all the time just because you assume that you're helping people help people we're just doing it because we took an oath and we can't walk away from it and because we've put our youth and a lot a lot of years in it so now we are at that point in our lives that we can't just trash all of that and that a lot of people when they ask me oh would you opportunity initially if you would ask me this i think about in 2019 i would say yes in a heartbeat because i thought this was the thing i wanted to do in my life and i always thought that but now that it's 2021 uh i feel i always stutter a bit but do i still want it that bad I used to think this is something that would make me feel, but at the same time, I have noticed that this, uh, the day it just ends up in me feeling smaller and smaller day by day, which could get dispersed any moment in time, and then I would have a hard time getting a grasp of my own self. So yes, some days do feel, make you feel a little larger, 
sometimes do make you feel very small and very insignificant. So I do completely agree with this topic. And thank you so much. Mm, great. The mother disagrees with my topic and the daughter <laughs> agrees with my topic. Good. That's a good team, huh? <laughs> so, great. Wonderful thing. Uh, so next we have uh, Sujit. Sujit, are you there? Sujit was there, I think. I think he left. He got scared. No? No, no Sujit is not there. So next we'll move on to Prashant. Yeah. I'm here. Prashant, you want an easy topic, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Prashant, your topic is if you can cry with a pure heart, nothing else compares to such a prayer. If you can cry with a pure heart, nothing else can compare to such a prayer. Prashant, what does that mean? I put it in the chat. Mm -hmm. Nothing else compares to such a prayer. Yeah. Good evening, fellow Toastmaster. So it's about how how you think you will get uh, basically help if there is no one is there to help you out. So it's all about the it's all about if you think the what way your life, if you want to live your life. So sometimes you feel uh, disheartened and seeing there is no one to help you. Then you will just remember, remembering your go, your God or your you know parents who who's over with your with a deep heart. And some sometimes some lighting comes up, comes on, and you find the way. Then you start acting for the same. So it, it's all about how you deep thinking about the problem and get the solution by your, uh, uh, by your inner, by inner, you know, uh, by inner thoughts. That's all about. That's all thing in come in my mind. Umar, over to you. Wonderful. Good thoughts, Prashant. Well done. So we have with us uh, Dalal. Toastmaster Dalal. Yes, I, I'm here, Toastmaster Umar. So, Toastmaster Dalal, your topic is uh, when everything gets answered, it is fake. When everything gets answered, it is fake. What have you have to say about this topic? I put it in the chat. Thank you. When everything gets answered, it is fake. Thank you, Toastmaster Homer. As usual, your topics are most incisive. I will never forget the day you told me I could not run away from my shadow but that I could invite it to dance. I've been trying to run since then. When everything gets answered, it's a fake. Well, yes and no. Answering something correctly is not a fake, but answering something incorrectly to please someone like my wife, is a fake. And I have learned that I have to answer incorrectly when it comes to my wife. Otherwise, I am in deep trouble. And not only can I not run away from my shadow, but I can't even run away from her voice. Not even her voice, her looks. I've learned a new language with her. When she tells me, thank you very much, I'm in deep trouble. I know she's not happy. When she tells me, are you going to get me breakfast today? She's not asking me a question. When she tells me, are you thirsty at three o'clock in the morning? I know she's not asking me. She means, 
go and get me a glass of water. I had to remove a perfectly healthy wisdom tooth because she was having hers extracted and she felt it was gonna hurt. So the doctor said, no, I'm gonna give you anesthesia. She said, no, remove one of Galal's wisdom teeth and if it doesn't hurt him, you can remove mine. This story went into a magazine called Egypt Today. I'm having a shower at 37 and a half degrees. She comes in and she says, Galal, you're splashing all over the water. And I say, get out of here. And then she pulls out the thing and the hot water comes onto me. Thank you, back to you and your incisive questions, Um. <laughs> Wonderful improvisation, Galal. I know, it's an interesting topic. <laughs> I got a tent. So now we have with us, yes. Wonderful, Adrija, Adrija is there. I think Adrija is in long time I've seen I'm seeing her. Yes, a long gap from Toastmasters. So please a simple topic. Simple topic. Yeah. Okay, so your topic is an awake heart. Awake heart is like a sky that pours light. An awake heart is like a sky that pours light. Adrija, what does that mean? I put it in the chat. Thank you for the topic, table topic master. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, based on the places you are in. An awake heart is like a sky that pours light. When you look at the sky, right now, I am in Sweden. And in Sweden, you will always see light everywhere. It's summer here. Until 11 o'clock, you have light. And now there is a survey also that has been conducted wherein it was said that the most happiest people live in these Europe area. So that is uh, Sweden has come in third or fourth in that list. And what I understood or what I believe the reason is because for the past four or five months, we live in full darkness from Almost uh, during the afternoons from one o'clock to o'clock, we are in dark. We have the dark mood. We see gray everywhere. We don't have anywhere to go. It's very wintry. It is always very, very cold and we don't have much uh, activities. But then for the next four or five months, when there is light everywhere, you can see people everywhere, like chirping birds who's flying around. They always travel around. They speak to each other. They have lunch together. They have dinner together in the parks. So it's a beautiful, beautiful feeling to see those people. It's very similar for, with us also. At some point in our life, we feel that we are exhausted. We have nothing to do. We have nobody to seek. We have nobody to look up to. We have nobody to share our thoughts with. And then we don't have that our heart sleeps. It has nothing to do. And then there is no light around us. But when we are away, there is a cause for happiness. Probably the summer is happiness. Probably that white, white snow is also happiness. If we are able to find that out for ourselves, we are awake. We know that we are still alive, probably, even when the season changes. So it's all about that. It is all about how you feel inside, how you stay inside, whether you're sleeping or are you awake. It's not about the rest of the things. You'll always have light over to you. Thank you. Interesting take, Drija. You took the awake word to its literal meaning. <laughs> good attempt, good attempt. Good thoughts also. So we have Rashmi is with us Rashmi. Rashmi requested me she wants to talk on the topic that I gave earlier. So, yes, one second. Okay, can you see me? Where are you? Yes, I can see you. So your okay. topic is if you can cry with a pure heart, nothing else compared to such a prayer. So you want to talk on this topic. Huh? If you can Absolutely. cry with a pure heart, nothing else compares to such a prayer. Rashmi. Yeah. I believe so. Um, thank you so much, uh, Table Topic uh, Master. I, I am very thankful and grateful for the opportunity given. This is, the, this is my first time joining outside my, uh, you know, Toastmasters Club. Uh, 
good evening good morning and good afternoon wherever you are and um, the reason why i love this topic is uh, to cry perhaps is one of nature's own way to connect to the higher self uh, whatever that is that we believe in right we we somehow um, can relate to any any divine we can somehow go to <laughs> that was my thought i'm sorry we can we can somehow relate to this and i um i am a big big fan of um the bhakti movement or the sufi movement that happened in india where there was the likes of sant kabir and all those uh, bhakti saints who were going on and on singing uh, you know some um uh, i don't know the exact word but whirling towards the higher self which which you you cry and you look you look up and you don't have a specific reason to cry but the feeling of oneness with the divine is something that you get in music that you get when you go to a large gathering where there's music happening i've seen people cry for no particular reason and somehow i feel music brings so many people together for you know from it doesn't matter from where you are what is your culture music somehow binds people and makes you cry for, for sometimes the symphony that you see the the poem that somebody reads uh, brings people together and i've seen that crying is one of the purest form of people expressing their love for for the higher self and that's how i want to end this topic thank you so much wonderful thoughts rashmi great very heartfelt so navid is there navid then bandana and vipar there so we'll have then navid yes sir please so navid your topic is what you are is god's gift to you what you become is your gift to god i'll repeat what you are is god's gift to you what you become is your gift to god i'll put it in the chat thank you very much table talk master and good evening to all of you my topic is what you are is god's gift to you and what you become is your gift to god what a real deep topic well just few days back i visited my friend there i found one book and the book i found it was really interesting uh, the title of the book was really interesting i heard about it many times but when i looked it and i suddenly said to my friend that give me for a read and it was a man search for meaning i think it, it was a victor frankel i think it was a writer so when you are born so you are in the world you can be you can feel a victim when you are having difficult situations or you can be a hero that respond in good way in good way or the way it should be many times we feel that we are victim and and it is easy to choose being victim is easy to choose because we take it take away our responsibility we don't feel that it is our responsibility we actually tell that it is and we actually blame someone that it happened with me because of this and this person or this reason it does not mean that god has created you without any meaning so when you are finding meaning it is the way you are finding why god has created you and when you find it it means that you will find the gift of god or the the gift you want to give to the god and sometimes it is not necessary to find the 
purpose or find the end if you are on the way it is your purpose if you are feeling content in your heart it is your purpose and you are feeling that you are doing the right thing what you want to do is actually you are on the right track so to be a gift for god you must be content in your heart so thank you very much table topic master good thoughts navid and uh, man such a winning is one of my favorite books also and it's a very good book uh, next we have bandana then irshad and vipa bandana yeah i'm there bandana are you there okay you are there yes bandana you want to take an easy topic okay yes okay so the power of human thought grows exponentially with the number of minds that share that thought i'll repeat the power of us human thought grows exponentially with the number of of most mean i put it in the chat yes that will be helpful to me it was too much to process at once <laughs> okay i don't understand that why do we need a team when we are playing a cricket match why do we need a team of 11 players in a football match why do every corporate office emphasize on a team work what is the requirement isn't it enough that single person can handle everything like you can be the developer you can be the tester you can be the coder you can be the client and you can be the customer also for so, for getting one solution one problem resolved tens of minds put their brains all out their heart into it and then solve a simple engineering problem well my friends this is the time when this thought when this line goes true to its meaning and emphasizes on a team work and and shows the power of a team that we need when N- numerous minds comes together to solve a particular problem or to investigate or discover something you need a brain which is in sync if you cannot thought the way you want someone else can give you an idea and you can proceed ahead someone can unblock you is that is that not the reason why we, why do we have team in every corporate office in every field be it scientist be it a nasa be it anything no single organization exists to itself even our nature uh, works in harmony with everything around us everything is so streamlined so perfectly well thought out laid out process by the god lakes ponds and then they become rivers and rivers become oceans sea and seas becomes ocean everything has a repercussion and everything is connected somewhere or the other this is what team does when you cannot proceed look to your fellow team members and they might help you in actually finding the solution so this statement very truly said by my fellow toastmaster that the power of human thought grows exponentially with the number of minds that share that thought if you are on the same thought process as mine if you are on working on the same thing that i am working on probably we can reach to a solution much quickly and much quick much before the time with this i keep my uh, i rest my rest my all the your, rest your case <laughs> <laughs> so you talked about teamwork i was thinking that somebody if i give that topic they will come to will talk about team and all that interesting good thought and wonderful attempt so irshad is there irshad Uh, yes sir i am here sir uh, i am newcomer and uh, uh, it will be better if i, I was given a, a little easy topic <laughs> okay you you want an easy topic yes so you listen to your heart or you listen to your mind uh, <laughs> sir uh, normally i use my mind sir. not okay. heart why tell us why sir Uh, whenever i see let's suppose i will talk about the university life uh, because i am a student in engineering university so uh, every 
our hearts want that make a relation with girls and so in this and this and go to <laughs> uh, mean to different restaurants and hotels and so and so but our mind say they say us that uh, if you indulge in these ways uh, and these and you will be what well, the first thing you will be bank uh, pocket wrapped and the second one is you will waste a lot of time so that's why I, i'm using my mind Though, sir, though I am energetic and I also use sometimes my heart. So wonderful. Go to them. We should uh, follow Thank our you. heart. We should follow our heart, but we don't forget to take our mind with us also. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so la, uh, we have uh, Vibha Bharti. Yes, Master Omar. Uh, your topic is until you have suffered much in your heart. you cannot learn humility until you have suffered much in your heart you cannot learn humility i'll put it in the chat yeah thank you thank you for table topic master and uh, good morning good evening good afternoon to all the global impromptu uh, toast masters and guests until you have suffered much in your heart you cannot learn humility yeah i will 50 50 agree with this topic because it's up to your upbringing uh, what you learn from your environment your parents and your in in your school see if we if we go to if we uh, born and brought up in a uh, in a family who where you find everybody you are surrounded with with the people who are educated who who uh, follows the morals and disciplines they won't teach you anything any bad thing and they will always push you toward good things so uh, so uh, humility is like a, yeah so uh, whatever you behave whatever you give to others it's up to you and it is behind uh, and behind these things it is your family your surroundings your schools school so uh, until you have suffered much in your heart yes i i am uh, i can be agree with uh, this point also because uh, uh, when things go good you are happy and uh, you feel uh, blissful and you you give everything everybody good but the thing is if you are suffering from negative things or if you are in the situation where you find everybody is uh, if, uh, nobody is in favor of you and you are you are getting yourself deep into the area deep into the uh, area where people just uh, use you or uh, people don't support you in any field and for any cause in for this yeah sorry i, I am taking a bit uh, like a uh, time yeah so i can say that the um, feeling or the behavior comes slowly and gradually and you become mature timely like time by time uh, a child cannot behave uh, behave all of a sudden what uh, he wants to do he he wants to give so until i have not suffered like uh, it is it is uh, suffering or it is uh, it is the situation where you polish yourself or where you feel that i am at the that level where i can give good thing or bad thing so i think we, this is the <laughs> this is the tech take on from my side and uh, over to you to smash over <laughs> good attempt <laughs> good thoughts now we are last but not the least jessy ma'am who will take the timer for Jessie ma'am, Savita ma'am will take. Okay, so Jessie ma'am, are you ready? Yes. 
the your topic is the spiritual life does not remove us from the world but leads deeper leads us deeper into it spiritual life does not remove us from the world but leads us deeper into it i'll put it in the chat Uh, fellow Toastmasters and guests, good evening. This is a very incisive topic because we are spiritual beings in the human body. It is the spirit that covers. Uh, my body is only a structure, like a car has got a, a outer cover. It's the spirit is the uh, force that makes us talk, liveliness, everything comes from the spirit. The spiritual, um, uh, the spiritual life does not remove us from the world, but leads us into deeper. That is the source that we need to find out. Who am I? From the uh, every time we get to say, "Who am I? Who, who am I?" We need to figure out where, how, what is my this world a better place? place. How can I give myself to others? Somebody said uh, my gift to God. When I become better and better, I go deeper into my faith, deeper into the spiritual being, deeper to the connection, deeper to the source. And that's my gift to God. Uh, when we are born here, we are sent for a mission. And that mission is to find out what can I do for you? Uh, that Kennedy, I think the US, don't ask what, I'm, uh, what I'm, I am getting. Ask, what can I do? So our job itself is finding and asking and giving ourselves to others and getting deeper and deeper and deeper. God knows our life itself, a fathomless abyss. We need to get to the bottom. Each day is a beautiful day. Um, go deeper and deeper and live your life, a spiritual life. You are not missing anything in the material life. You can still do wonders in the material life. And it can be seen also uh, in the way you deal with people, in the way you talk to the people. Uh, even uh, evil people can recognize this. This is the person who talks sense. But uh, that's not my nature. Maybe you attract lots of people. Over to you, Toastmaster of the one. Toastmaster of the day, table topic master. <laughs> And to us, table topic monster, whatever you want to say. <laughs> Good. Last but not the least. See, Jessima, what he she did is she took a lot of topics, takes from it, gave to God. Yeah, it's all connected to <laughs> all, all topics are connected if you analyze the entire meeting in one way or other, they are connected. So, the last but not the least, distinguish Toastmaster Amjadali. Yes, sir. I'm here. So your topic is no cloud is so dark that the sun can't shine through. No cloud is so dark that the sun can't shine through. I'll put it in the chat. Thank you so much, Mr. Topics Master. No cloud is so dark that the sun can't shine through. I partially agree and partially disagree. Reason being, because the cloud is all made in our mind. If we don't pass it through the sunshine, we will not let it pass. We have to open our mind. We have to open the cloud. We have to make this cloud softer to let the shines pass, let the rays pass. If we take it into our human context or the thought context, you, if you go literally, and sometimes it becomes dark, yet it is become a dark. So sunshine or sunlight does not pass through. It happens. The same thing happens in human people, in human's life, in our mind. If I'm not ready to listen to somebody, I don't let somebody give a chance to enter in my life, of course I will not, because I'm not ready to accept my, I'm a, I'm a dark cloud. If I will make myself softer, I will give him a hard benefit of doubt, let her pass. 
the sunlight or sunshine or the advice into my life, you never know that life, life will change. But when I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm the one who knows everything, I think I'm an arrogant person, okay? I know my life better. And somebody mentioned about a book. In a book, you understand more people. You understand one book is written by one person sometimes, but it's about so many people. One book talks about many people's life. So that's what, when somebody enters into our life, he is not only talking about one person's life or his life only, he's talking about his experience with many people around us. So I actually partially agree and partially disagree with the topic behind the black, blackest, uh, the darkest cloud is the clear blue. Oh, no, this is not something. No cloud is so dark that the sun cannot uh, shine through. Yes, we have such clouds in our lives which are built by us, which are our thoughts, which are rigidness, which are our arrogance, which is our arrogance. And we don't let the sign or the shine or the sun, sun, sunlight passes through or the advices of people's passes to make our better life better. So make yourself humble, make yourself calm, make yourself softer. Trust me, light will pass, light will enter, life will be better. Thank you so much. Back to you, sir. So, so much light in this session. Light is always there, angelic light. What awesome. I mean, great thoughts, just Mr. Osman. I'm just, one person has just added, we can take or not, if you allow it. Uh, you are the boss if you like to take yes. it, take it. Shrestha, are you there, Shrestha? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yes, Shrestha, you would like to take a topic. So your topic is, love is not an emotion, it's your very existence. Love is not an emotion, it's your very existence. Rumi said it. Shrestha. Oh, she did not like the topic? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm thinking about it. Uh, Can you change my topic, please? Okay. So your topic is, oh, what is the difference between knowledge and wisdom? What is the difference between having knowledge and having wisdom? Can you talk on it? Shrestha? Yeah, yeah. One second. Okay. It's a very interesting topic. Uh, good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Knowledge is something that, he, that we have accumulated. We have learned in our school, uh, from our surroundings. Uh, but wisdom comes from experience. Wisdom, uh, wisdom goes beyond learning facts and making... Uh, wisdom goes beyond learning facts and learning things that are taught to us in school. Wisdom is something. Uh, sorry. Uh, wisdom is something. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Wisdom is something that comes from experience and it's a state of being uh, incisive. Uh, but knowledge is merely, but knowledge is merely uh, knowing facts and things that, knowing facts and tr truths. I'm sorry, that's it. Well, good attempt, Shesta. Yes, you're right. Knowledge is accumulation of facts and figure. Wisdom is what we do get, get through experience. We apply our knowledge and get experience and from that experience we get wisdom. Good, so with this, I would like to end that uh, session. It was great spiritual session with all of you. Thank great you so thought. much, Mr. Yeah. Tosmaso Omar Farooq. Really appreciate Who would like to give a topic to Tosmaso Omar Farooq? Okay, Savita ma'am. Yeah, please. Tosmaso Omar. Yes. Yeah. Topic for you is I am never in control of what happens around me, but I am always in control of what happens within me. 
I'll put it in the chat. Okay, I am uh, never in control of whatever happens around me, and I'm in control of whatever happens within me. Yes, of course, that is hundred percent true. We are what we believe in. We are what we are inside. That is what defines us. We may not able to control the things that are around us. We can control things that are inside us, our own thoughts, our mindset. What are we feeling about? I always say that choose your thoughts like you are choosing some clothes in your cupboard, like wardrobe. Okay, what kind of clothes you want to wear? The best kind of clothes. So you have to wear the best kind of thoughts every day. Select your thoughts like you select your clothes. And that's how you will translate those thoughts into feelings and actions. And that's how you can control yourself. Whatever people will say or do, it's your choice how you react to it, how you feel about it. It's your own choice. And you are in control of it completely. You are CEO of your life. Come on. You have to realize this thing. You can promote anyone. And you can hire anyone in your life. It's all up to you. Don't put the control, remote control of your life in somebody's hands so you have to focus on your inner self i always say that if you get your inside right the outside will fall into place we have to manage our inner world because if you are focusing on the external it will never never you will never never be satisfied you will want it more okay i can do this i can improve that no but if you want to get your inside right, your, that inner satisfaction you get, work on your inner self, that you will get it right. This body is just what a cover, like a, your computer has a software. This soul is the software. So don't get that soul, that viruses of the external world. All those bugs and worms. So, because if that soul is affected, your external world will be affected also. So, this body is just a structure, somebody told us. It's just a hardware. Focus on your software, and you will, everything will be falling into place, and you will be on your right track, your spiritual track. Over to you, Dr. Thank you so much, Dr. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are at 9.23. Let's uh, quickly go to DTM Jesse for the timing report, please. Yes, we had 24 speakers today. Uh, to, uh, Dr. Farida spoke for 3 minutes, 33 seconds, 333. Uh, Savita, 2.30. Uh, Anetta, 2 minutes, 19. Supriya, 1 minutes, 12. Carl, 2 minutes. Dhaneshwar, 2 minutes. Sherman, two minutes, 30 seconds. Denisha, two minutes, 40 seconds. Sunita, two minutes, 10 seconds. Naveen, two minutes, 17. Timbradi, two minutes, 50 seconds. Zainab, two minutes, 48. Prashant, one minute, 18. Galal, two minutes, 18. Adrija, two minutes, 15. Rashmi, two minutes. Navi, two minutes, 55 seconds. Bandana, two minutes, 20. Irshad, 40 seconds. Viba, 3 minutes, 25 seconds. Jesse, 2 minutes, 17. Amjad, 2 minutes, 10 seconds. Shreshta, 1 minute, 30 seconds. Umar, 2 minutes, 49 seconds. Wonderful topics. So much to talk. You Sometimes you go over uh, the time limit, maybe. Wonderful. Yes. yes. Thank over you so much, Jesse. I just really appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together with thunderous round of applause to thank these two beautiful souls, DTM Jesse and Tosma Somar. A big hand for you, both of you, for managing this 175th session. With that, power vested in me as a host of this meeting, I attend the meeting. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.